first cut of the day. Um, actually kind of bent up here, but here's the old piece. Um, the holes kind of all through it. And this was a trim hole down here in the bottom. Want to get rid of. Cut out a cut out a piece that covered up the bottom hole. So you can see there's still a top hole. There's a body crease that runs right across here, using that kind of as a structural support for a welding point so that it doesn't um, it doesn't warp or buckle because it's got kind of a bend in there, makes it kind of a tough spot. Cut out the replacement piece. Um, I clamped it to the old, drew it out, and then cut it out. Um, it's kind of the process that I like to do. I don't like to cut the hole and then try to make the piece to fit the hole because, yeah, it just doesn't always work out real well. Um, this leaves me with a small gap all the way around, as you can see. And that's not enough to use like a uh, butt weld clamp. If you want to use them, sometimes you got to use a, a, a thicker cut off wheel for that. I don't know if you can see this, but from welding, from doing the frame, because this is the area where I uh, rebuilt the frame on the bottom. Um, there's a little bit of weld coming through here that I'm going to clean out and um, and then it'll sit completely flush in there because I think that was actually kind of bowing it out just a little bit um, and uh, put this in the vise I've been working with it there's um, I don't know if you can see there's like a small dimple right here I'm gonna have to work out um, try to make sure it's completely flat when I lay it in there and uh, then I'll weld her all in and I'll uh, get back to you and then the next step of course is this this hole here all right thanks this is a time I usually don't actually give an update but I figured you know what the hey um, I don't know if you can see this here let's see if I can zoom in you can see that little hole right in the top of that weld those are the holes I was talking about that you get with flux core and they no matter what I do, if I when I grind that out and then I weld next to it, that hole will just kind of like move over a spot, and it, you'll end up chasing it all over the place and overworking your metal. So sometimes it's best to just kind of clean it and then uh, and kind of leave the hole and uh, and not worry about it. But everything's level, and um, then I go in between each one of these welds after this is completely cooled down and put another spot. And then keep doing that and in between each one of these um, if in between each one of these these welding patterns then you, you clean it all off before you go in and weld again so that you don't end up with flux underneath a new weld all right thanks I didn't know if I had shown this before so I wanted to show it to you now um, I don't know if you can see this real well but you can see the tops of the welds and stuff have all been knocked down all right, and you try to keep yourself out of the base metal. So there's just that little bit right there, and a couple right there. But for the most part, what you do is, see, <clears throat> at this point, you come at the edge with your three-inch grinder and cut off the top. All right, now you can either at this point you can you can do some hammer welding if you want to swell. Um, I typically don't do that, especially in an area like this because I can't access it. Um, because the frame's in the way. Some air, sometimes I will do it at this point. Um, I've had a hard time with, if I've got heavy or high welds, which happens when you're using flux core. Um, when I try to hammer weld sometimes, I can't get equal pressure against the back and the front. So then what I'll do is I'll actually end up driving it down, um, which gives you a little extra metal because it stretches and then you can push it back. But that's not really the point of, of hammer welding. You're wanting to swell the weld up, not, not um, not actually uh, dent the metal. But anyway, you can do it at this point or not. Um, then from here, what you do is you come at it from like the side. Now, you need to be careful when you're doing this because these things aren't meant to be side loaded. So you don't put positive pressure on it. You just kind of let it go across the surface until you start to see where it is contacting on both sides of the weld. And then from here, then I use either a, um, I got like a four and a half inch uh, sanding disc. Um, there's other methods you can use. I, I've got these uh, these abrasive wheels that can sometimes they'll work. Um, rotor locks. Either way, I mean that's your choice. But I'm just saying that you know, give you a good idea of what it's supposed to look like before you switch from going from the edge grinding to the side grinding. Thanks.